Hello everyone. Welcome to another video for the engineer. So before I proceed for today's topic, I would like to just give a few information in the beginning. Uh, it's been a month that I uploaded the last video. So the reason is very clear. See guys, I invest my time and it cannot be free, of course, because I share the top notch quality content and definitely these contents are going to help you for all of your interviews or also to tackle the data. I mean, your day to day life issues and uh, when you're working in a technical environment. So all I request is to opt for the membership. So moving forward, there would be many more content which would be coming for membership and membership was only for YouTube. It's not for me to do a consulting session. Training and other things are separate. You are only supporting as a YouTube channel so that I can create more content for you. The membership cost is not even more than 119 rupees. So please opt for the membership and get the high level content and also try to get the real time content and also you'll be getting idea about how to tackle the interview questions and technical questions and other topics as well. All right, so I'm not going to request further. So if you wish to, you can join. Otherwise, that's OK. It's up to you. There are a few contents. You can also see that, but do not demand more when you are not helping us directly or indirectly. I'm very clear on this. So now let's move forward to this today's topic. So first thing is we'll be discussing about uh, this is the only question which I'm going to take today. So somebody has put the question. You try to start the HANA database, but database is not starting up. It means your database startup issues are there. What are the checks you'll perform? So which which are the areas you're going to check first? Second thing, what are the potential reasons behind the issue? I'm going to give a brief issue and the I mean details about the checks and the potential reasons. But the deep dive investigations are done in my regular training sessions. If you're interested, you can come and join my training session and where you can leverage the deep dive of HANA administration. Before we go forward, first we'll understand how the HANA restart sequence work actually. If you're going to start up a HANA database, so what happens? The first thing. So I'm not sure your skill level on HANA, but in a very basic level, HANA has a persistence layer. Okay. So in the persistence layer, whenever you have a persistence layer, so that will be having the save point. I mean, every time there's a save point, the changes in memory get updated into the disk and stored as a consistent state in the persistence layer. Nothing but your HANA data and also HANA data volume. What you can see here that is called as a persistence data volume. So whenever you start your database, so the first thing is the data volume of each service is accessed because as I said, your set point is triggered service wise. Similarly, the persistence also having the service wise data there like your name server index server and access engine so you are going to you know like see if you open your hana data volume you're going to see each service is storing the data so if it is just in system database it's a name server if say in the, i'm not in a database it's index server and the access engine and also if you're using any additional services like tv server and the other thing then that will be also part of the persistence so the moment you restart first it will open the list of open transactions are read into the memory which is obvious open transactions mean the transactions which are uh you can say which are not completed uh, so and I'll discuss about it. What do you mean by open transactions? So open transactions are the two methods. First thing is the write transactions that are open. So we'll come one by one. So next thing is the row tables are loaded to memory. So what happens to the open transactions here? So all the write transactions which are open, of course. So those are going to be stopped. And you know, whenever your database is stopped, assuming that is a hard stop, it means immediately the database is stopped due to crash or some other reason. So I assuming that I am assuming that it is a hard shut down. So whenever your transactions are right, transactions are open when your database is stopped, those will be rolled back, of course, because those are not completed. And any changes which are committed already, so those are going to be rolled forward. Rolled forward means those logs will be replayed and that data key you can access whenever you start the database. But the changes which are already ongoing or open transactions, those are not going to be in the database. So that transaction you are going to lose anyways because that is not completed. And because you can see here, I said already that I'm assuming is a hard shutdown. That's the reason all the things are coming here. But whenever you do a soft shutdown, so the advantage is before your shutdown, a save point is triggered. So it means whatever the changes you have in your database in the memory are stored in the disk. So it means it's stored in the persistence, in the consistent state. So the moment you start up your database, the database will come up immediately because it will open up the persistence. 
So the very first time when you start the database, the database will try to open up the persistence. If your persistence is all the data, you don't need to do a little log replay, and that will be not consuming time because it will be very quick because it is in a consistent state, and you have to try to open the persistence without replaying the logs, which is of course a very good scenario, you know, to start the database. Okay, and what happened to the aborted transactions? Those are rolled back definitely, and once your logs are replayed, this point will be performed because always remember whenever you recover a database or the redo logs are replayed after that all the changes must be there in hana data volume so that's the reason once the redo logs are replayed okay and that data is coming to hana data so before that there will be a set point operation it means whatever the changes have been done in your memory once your logs are replayed so all the changes has to be in a consistent state in a HANA data volume. So that's the reason whenever your database is restored or you can say uh, you can say the logs are replayed. So those are going to be, you know, like then after that there will be a set point operation and that changes all the changes which come as a part of the redo logs that will be stored in your HANA data volume because always remember your objective is to make your database consistent and database is consistent when your changes are there in the HANA data, not in the HANA log. And apart from that, you can see the column tables are marked a preload and also these things are very common. So tables are column tables are to be loaded and then you're going to start the database. Also, there are a lot of things you know inside, so I cannot discuss everything. Of course, this is a uh, you know, as part of the YouTube video, but if you want to know more detail, you can come and join my training. I'll show you each and every log files and show you the steps and how you're going to understand each and everything. I'll ensure that. But for that, you have to enter for a HANA administration advanced level training. So that's how it is. Next thing is let's find the let's let's see what are the checks I'm going to do. Suppose my database is not starting. First thing, you have to check the HANA processes. You can check PSI for any of Grip, STB or SIDADM. So you should see all the HANA level processes. Whenever you see all the processes, you will be saying whether this process are running or not. Even any of the process that restarted, you will see the last start time. So based on that, you have to take an action and also ensure that this process must be running. You can see your current SIDADM user. Otherwise, you need to check why it is running with the wrong user. Next thing, you try to start the HANA database, use the run SDB, uh, you need to use SDB start command definitely, and you'll see the traces files, you know, like, but generally what happens when you try to start using SDB starting database is not starting up. So all you need to do is you need to try to start the processes manually. This is very rare. I don't recommend anyone to, you know, start the processes manually. I mean, unless until it is required, but for name server, index server, doesn't make sense for me to do a manual, you know, like a restart. Instead, you just do the entire database or the tenant database restart. That makes more sense. In case you are having name server, so do not restart the entire database if you're having multiple tenants. If you're having single tenant, you can also start the restart the system database. But if it is issue with the index server, so try to start the particular tenant database instead of starting only the index server because my recommendation is to do a proper start on stop so that all the processes can be run smoothly if you just start index server it is good you can start but my recommendation is to start the entire database i mean the tenant database not the system db if you are having single tenant it doesn't matter you start your name server also the index server manually i don't mind because anyways your entire database down you can select either of it otherwise just go with a clean restart instead of starting a single server do all the uh, i mean just stop the database perform a clean ipc and start it okay so you can see in case if you are able to start using this then this issue could be with your sap start srb or sdb daemon so that's okay it's not an issue so either try to do a clean restart instead of starting uh, the individual services next important thing you need to check the traces so traces are very important and to go to the cd trace and they will find the database you know names so, i mean your system db and tenant database trace files so generally in your HANA database, major culprit is your index server. So directly straight away reach out to your CD trace in the tenant database and check the index server trace files. But I won't say that you are not going to check the name server because sometimes name server also cause issues. So I really recommend you to check all the files. First check the daemon, then the name server, index server, but I will see I'll recommend you to check the daemon and the index server first and show that index server is running fine. But if any reason your name server is started or having issue, then doesn't make sense to check the index server because if you're without name server, 
your system will not be running up and doesn't matter your index server you check or not because the primary culprit would be the name server. And apart from that, other services, auxiliary services, which you can see compiled server preprocessor, you can check it later on. But the most important things which you need to check is the daemon trace and also the name server and the index server. And generally, if you're using S4 HANA systems and also S4 HANA is an application, definitely. So that always connect to your tenant database. Application never connects to your system DB. So that's the reason always if you identify your name service running as usual system DB has no issues. So just check the tenant database trace files, the index server trace files and see what is the exact reason because your application always connect to the tenant database, not the system DB. So next thing is the common issues. OK, so what are the common issues that we are going to see for the HANA DB fail startup process? First thing is a disk full. This is the issue which I see at least at most of the customers. Half of the people, they don't know how to troubleshoot it. Some people are in AWS, some people are in Azure, some people are on premises, but it's very easy. It's not so difficult. You will be seeing the trace file in CD trace and see RC24 is the error code for the no space left. So you might see data volume full, log volume full and disk full event on the log volume. So log volume full situation, you need to take it very carefully. You can refer this SAP note, and I think there are a bunch of SAP notes which you can refer it. And also there are a couple of videos in my YouTube channel how to deal with the log volume situation. Similarly, disk full event on a log volume. So these are both are different different scenarios. Always remember why the log volume get full in HANA. Simple thing. The major culprit is your backup log backup is not happening. Ideally, whenever your logs are being triggered, your I mean the redo logs, those are going to be stored in the HANA log volume. And once it is stored in HANA log volume, it is going to be backup. I mean, there are different different state of logs. So once the log is closed, it is going to be backup. If the log backup is not happening, so the log will be redo log will not be released. So Eventually, that will pile up in your HANA log volume. That will cause the log volume situations. And how to deal with it? You can refer this SAP note. It's not so difficult. Or as uh, in my training, I generally saw each and everything, but I already gave you context on this, how you're going to fix the issues. So you just need to identify. It's just a very easy thing, just that you have to mount it to a separate mount point, you know, for temporarily. Then again, you have to reclaim the logs then again remount it and then start the database. This is the high level step, but you can see the detailed information in the note and disk full is very common and always be avoided. Can be avoided if you have a proper monitoring. Then the corrupt log segments. This is something nobody can help you. Even not me, not your company, no one can help you. Always remember if your it's very important that your redo log segments are not corrupted. In case you are Redo log segments are corrupted. It means you cannot use those redo logs to recover your database because all you need to do is you have to use either complete database backup. Okay, otherwise you cannot. If you want to use a log segment, I mean, particularly the redo logs, and you see one log segment is corrupted, then all the log segments after that, whatever the log segments are generated. You cannot do the recovery. So that's the reason you need to only recover your database using the backup or the log segments, you know, before the time when log is corrupted. So these are the only this is the only solution you have even. So that's the reason it's very important that your logs should not be corrupted in your HANA database. Next thing is the missing log segments. So log corruption is a different issue. Missing log segment is a different issue. So whenever you are trying to access the logs, so inside your HANA log path, inside the services, you should see the log segment or date file, the data file. It should be available, it should be accessible. So sometimes there could be some missing permission. That could be one another reason. Also, sometimes your mount points are also missing. Example, your HANA log. Generally, when I set up a file system, I create a root. In that I, you know, mounted for HANA log, HANA data, and HANA share. These are the three file systems to create as per the HANA file system structure. So that's the reason you need to ensure that all those file entries and the mount points are maintained in, in your. All the mount points are maintained in your FS tab. If that is not maintained, if I reboot my server, so the mount point are going to missing, and eventually, you cannot start your database without log segment database cannot be started. You can see these SAP notes. This will be helping you. We'll give some idea here. Next thing is the HANA startup is slow. This some of the cases. So there is no error, but your database takes long time to start. But the potential reason is I can tell you the potential reason. The first thing is you don't have a save point. 
OK, that's one of the reason because you have multiple redo logs in your database because there is no set point for a longer period of time. When you start your database, all the redo logs has to be recovered or to replay to start your database. So that's the reason it takes longer time. But nowadays there is a persistence memory concept, you, which is used by HANA fast restart and HANA starts in within a second. So you can also explore that option. I am not going to deep dive there. And you want to see the startup issues, you can also see here, but startup issue is not a big thing. If you have properly have the set point operation and there is no uh, there is no log segments are corrupted, then I don't think the startup is going to longer time. Authorization issue, I'm going to, I mean, just a very basic ensure that your file systems can be accessible. If not, just check the permission, give the CH mod 764 permission, ensure all the file systems are being authorized. Hardware issues, as I said, OS related. So I'm not sure how comfortable you guys are with OS, but always remember you, you need to have the OS knowledge. When you install a HANA database, there are OS parameters and network parameters. If you see any issues specific to OS, or you know hardware related though you'll not be seeing in the trace file directly but you can also validate all the os network parameters and also the network specific parameters for your hana database which have been again i discussed in my training i cannot go and deep dive here so then next thing is the rename generally we also rename the database many cases so after the rename also the database doesn't start so you can just refer to this sap node i'm not going to deep dive here because it's a very easy thing so i don't want to spend a lot of time here next thing is you are going to your hana is up but system is not starting up which is very common i mean i think everybody is aware of it that we have uh, the rt trans hyphen d command to check and in case your rt trans hyphen d gives you error it means your database to application connection is not not established and it's very easy you just need to check the transfer log file but to fix it you need to use the sdb user store you need to create the entry you need to put the update the schema password for your SAP HANA database, okay, and you have to run SDB user store in the application side, and then your SAP can connect to the database, and RT Trans D will be giving you the 0000 return code, which means your database is able to connect with the application, and dispatcher can accept the connection, and your SAP system will be starting up. So that's all for now, guys. And as you can see, we have expanded our training. There are a lot of trainings like VC SANA, BTP, Cloud LMA, AWS Azure, and all. If you're interested, you can check with our team and you can enroll for our training. And uh, you can also see our contacts in the odiengineer.com. So our uh, new website is a little delayed due to some technical issues. So it will be live soon, you know, somewhere in this month. So once it is live, you can also get the benefit of your LMS platform and subscriptions, membership, loyalty points, a lot of options are there. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. If you have any feedback, please do let me know. Put in the comment section. And one more request, please opt for the membership. That's all for now. Have a great evening. Take care.